second in this series of videos sort of giving a background on the mathematics that we use to express geophysical theories. This series is going to look at this, what we call the vector operator, sometimes called the nabla symbol. It's this sort of upside down triangle. We'll try to understand what does that symbol mean and how do we use it. Uh, this sequence is going to rely on your understanding of vectors and the various vector products, scalar product, dot product, and cross product. So if you're not sure about those and you need a refresher, go and check out that first sequence, um, M1, on vectors and vector products, and then come back here. So to understand this nebula symbol, it's, it's related to derivatives in a vector calculus uh, framework. So let's imagine that we have a scalar function that has a value at some point. So this is a scalar function, we'll call it phi, and it's located at some point given by this vector x. So we'll say that's phi of x. And then in vector calculus and differential calculus, we're always under, trying to understand what's happening as a as we move from one point to another in a space. So let's say that we move from this point x, a small distance given by a differential vector dx. So we're now at a new point here. And the location of that point is x plus dx, and then the value of our function, phi, at that point is going to be phi of x plus dx. Of course, the value at that point is going to be the whatever value it had before, phi of x, plus the change in phi as it went from one point to another, so phi phi of x plus dx is equal to phi of x plus some small change d phi. And that small change was what we call the total differential of phi. So total total differential. We can write that out as d phi is going to be all of the changes with respect to all of the variables that phi is changing with respect to. So in this case, basically just x, y, and z. And each of those uh, changes per unit length multiplied by the distance we went, so the components of dx. So we can write that out as d by dx of phi times dx, there are going to be three of these terms, so we're going to have a d by dy term, a d by dz term, we're taking the partial derivatives of phi with respect to each of the variables that it depends on, so the coordinate variables, dy, and dz. So I have a small change in phi per unit change of x multiplied by the distance that we went in the x direction. And then a small change per unit y times the distance we went in the y direction, and same for the z direction. To make sense of that expression in a, in a vector calculus um, framework, we can sort of extract the vector components of this expression. So what we have here is a, essentially a dot product between two vectors. So if you think back to the first video sequence on vectors and vector products, we can recognize this as a dot product between this vector, d phi, 
d5 by dx, d5 by dy, d5 by dz. So I'm going to have d by dx, d by dy, d by dz, phi. And then each of those components is multiplied by the unit vector in that direction. So just remember back to our first video sequence where we define these unit vectors i, j, and k in the directions of x, y, and z. And then the other side of the story is that vector dx. So that has the components dx, dy, and dz. And each of those is multiplied by the unit vector in the coordinate directions. So we can see that the total differential d phi is a dot product between this, this vector here and this dx vector. So the way that we write that, to be, I mean, in mathematics, when we're writing lots of formulas, we uh, try to be concise. So we take this expression, and to write it more concisely, we can say that this is some sort of symbol representing this vector of partial derivatives multiplied by phi, post multiplied by phi, and then dot product with the dx. So this one right here is what we call the vector operator. So I'll just write that out. In the next video, we'll take a look uh, a little bit closer at some of the operations that we can do that, do with that. So we define this operator here as the vector d by dx, d by dy, d by dz in the Cartesian coordinate system. It has other definitions in other coordinate systems, which we'll talk about when we get to curvilinear coordinate systems in a later video. But for now, we'll just work in a Cartesian coordinate system. So we define this operator as d by dx times i plus d by dy times j plus d by dz times k. So in the next video, we'll look at some of the common operations that we do with that.